Ozma of Oz by L. Frank Baum Chapter 19 The King of Ev If there were any shifting, rock-colored gnomes on the mountainside now, they were silent and respectful, for our adventurers were not annoyed, as before, by their impudent laughter. Really, the gnomes had nothing to laugh at since the defeat of their king. On the other side, they found Ozma's golden chariot standing as they had left it. Soon the lion and the tiger were harnessed to the beautiful chariot, in which was enough room for Ozma and the queen and six of the royal children. Little Evering preferred to ride with Dorothy upon the sawhorse, which had a long back. The prince had recovered from his shyness and had become very fond of the girl who had rescued him. So they were fast friends and chatted pleasantly together as they rode along. Belina was also perched upon the head of the wooden steed, which seemed not to mind the added weight in the least, and the boy was full of wonder that a hen could talk and say such sensible things. When they came to the gulf, Ozma's magic carpet carried them all over in safety, and now they began to pass the trees in which birds were singing, and the breeze that was wafted to them from the farms of Ev was spicy with flowers and new-mown hay, and the sunshine fell full upon them to warm them and drive away from their bodies the chill and dampness of the underground kingdom of the gnomes. I would be quite content, said the scarecrow to Tick-Tock, were only the tin woodman with us, but it breaks my heart to leave him behind. He was a fine fellow, replied Tick-Tock, although his material was not very durable. Oh, tin is an excellent material, the scarecrow hastened to say, and if anything ever happened to poor Nick Chopper, he was always easily soldered. Besides, he did not have to be wound up and was not liable to get out of order. I sometimes wish, said Tick-Tock, that I was stuffed with straw as you are. It is hard to be made of copper. I have no reason to complain of my lot, replied the scarecrow. A little fresh straw now and then makes me as good as new. But I can never be the polished gentleman that my poor departed friend the tin woodman was. You may be sure the royal children of Ev and their queen mother were delighted at seeing again their beloved country. And when the towers of the palace of Ev came into view, they could not forbear cheering at the sight. Little Evering, riding in front of Dorothy, was so overjoyed that he took a curious tin whistle from his pocket and blew a shrill blast that made the sawhorse leap and prance in sudden alarm. What is that? asked Belina, who had been obliged to flutter her wings in order to keep her seat upon the head of the frightened sawhorse. That's my whistle, said Prince Evering holding it out upon his hand. It was the shape of a little fat pig, made of tin and painted green. The whistle was in the tail of the pig. Where did you get it? asked the yellow hen, closely examining the toy with her bright eyes. Why, I picked it up in the Gnome King's palace while Dorothy was making her guesses, and I put it in my pocket, answered the little prince. Belina laughed, or at least she made the peculiar cackle that served for her laugh. No wonder I couldn't find the tin woodman, she said, and no wonder the magic belt didn't make him appear or the king couldn't find him either. What do you mean? questioned Dorothy. Why, the prince had him in his pocket, cried Belina, cackling again. I did not, protested little Evering. I only took the whistle. Well, then watch me, returned the hen, and reaching out a claw, she touched the whistle and said, Ev. Swish! Good afternoon, said the tin woodman, taking off his funnel cap and bowing to Dorothy and the prince. I think I must have been asleep for the first time since I was made of tin, for I do not remember our leaving the gnome king. You've been enchanted answered the girl, throwing an arm around her old friend and hugging him tight in her joy. But it's all right now. I want my whistle, said the little prince, beginning to cry. Hush, cautioned Belina. The whistle is lost, but you may have another when you get home. The scarecrow had fairly thrown himself upon the bosom of his old comrade, so surprised and delighted was he to see him again, and Tick-Tock squeezed the tin woodman's hand so earnestly that he dented some of his fingers. Then they had to make way for Osmond to welcome the tin man, and the army caught sight of him and set up a cheer and everybody was delighted and happy. For the Tin Woodman was a great favorite with all who knew him, and his sudden recovery after they had thought he was lost to them forever was indeed a pleasant surprise. Before long the cavalcade arrived at the royal palace, where a great crowd of people had gathered to welcome their queen and her ten children. There was much shouting and cheering, and the people threw flowers in their path, and every face wore a happy smile. They found the Princess Languideer in her mirrored chamber, where she was admiring one of her handsomest heads, one with rich chestnut hair, dreamy walnut eyes, and a shapely hickory nut nose. She was very glad to be relieved of her duties to the people of Ev, and the queen graciously permitted her to retain her rooms in her cabinet of heads as long as she lived. Then the queen took her eldest son out upon a balcony that overlooked the crowd of subjects gathered below and said to them, Here is your future ruler, King of Ardo XV, 
He is 15 years of age, has 15 silver buckles on his jacket, and is the 15th of Ardo to rule the land of Ev. The people shouted their approval 15 times, and even the wheelers, some of whom were present, loudly promised to obey the new king. So the queen placed a big crown of gold set with rubies upon Avardo's head, and threw an ermine robe over his shoulders, and proclaimed him king. And he bowed gratefully to all his subjects, and then went away to see if he could find any cake in the royal pantry. Ozma of Oz and her people, as well as Dorothy, TikTok, and Belina, were splendidly entertained by the queen mother, who owed all her happiness to their kind offices. And that evening the yellow hen was publicly presented with a beautiful necklace of pearls and sapphires, as a token of esteem from the new king.